This video has been funded in part by the Guild via Patreon. Check out the links in the description or at the end of this video for more details. Hello everyone, my name is Chris Gildart, and I am finally feeling well enough to do one of these videos. I am still coughing, so unfortunately for the time being, I won't be doing anything like live streams or let's plays, uh, but I am hoping to do more of these videos in the meantime until I can feel back to normal. Whatever normal is for me. Anyways, I have been searching and scrubbing the internet for some time now looking for a copy of Dynasty Warriors 4 Hyper for the PC. This is like my holy grail of Dynasty Warriors games, so I am so excited to go into one of my favorite entries in the franchise in the best way possible. I originally played Dynasty Warriors 4 for the first time on PS2. In fact, it was a demo disc that I got in a PlayStation magazine where I first got to know what this game would be like. I remember only being able to play as Xiao Yun, Dian Wei, Huang Gai, or Diao Chan. Looking back on it now, it was a bit weird that the only character that isn't from the first Dynasty Warriors is Huang Gai. I also remember it giving you the weapon with five hits, and the only two stages that you could play were the Yellow Turban Fortress and the Battle of Chengdu. I played the hell out of this until the full game finally came out in March 25th, 2003. Somehow, young Chris was perfectly fine with only two stages and four characters. Again, I played the hell out of the PS2 game, nearly reaching full 100%. One of the things that I loved while playing this game, and I believe I mentioned it in my review of Dynasty Warriors 4 back in 2017, was the alternate costumes. After playing quite a bit of Dynasty Warriors 3 and enjoying the alternate colors, I absolutely loved having these slightly altered costumes. I really wish they would have stuff like this in the modern games. On top of that, having the Dynasty Warriors 3 costumes was a treat as someone who started their Musou journey with that game. I ended up getting quite a number of weapons to level 10 before the Extreme Legend expansion came out on November 4th, 2003. Though I found this expansion didn't add as much as Dynasty Warriors 3 Extreme Legends did, I would still play with the expansion all of the time and would get a couple of level 11 weapons for my favorite characters. Yes, that means I got Shaho Dunes. Do you need to ask? I would later get a PSP as a gift, and through that I was able to play the portable spin-off simply titled Dynasty Warriors. I didn't even like this title back then. I mentioned a lot of the issues in my review for Dynasty Warriors 4, but there are a lot of problems. Not only did they put the map and info on the right-hand side, creating a 4x3 aspect ratio on a console that could achieve 16x9, it also did not carry over weapon experience to each stage. So that would mean that you could get your highest level weapon on the first stage, only to start over on the next one with level 1. It killed progression, and I didn't play a whole lot of it. There was a Game Boy Advance game that came out on August 29th, 2005 that I much preferred as my Portable Warriors experience until games like Samurai Warriors State of War and Dynasty Warriors Volume 2 came out. The final console release of Dynasty Warriors 4 that we would get was Dynasty Warriors 4 Empires on August 31st, 2004. Since this is the first Empires game, it's easily the worst. Similar to the PSP game, it doesn't have a good sense of progression because you can't carry over anything between playthroughs. Though I did play a decent amount of it, because of the Empire's experience of building your own story, I would also later play the base game on the original Xbox after finding some component cables and enjoying the game in progressive display. Though this version didn't have the Extreme Legends expansion and Empires was only ever released on PS2, this was my preferred method of playing my favorite of the classics in the Warriors franchise for a long time. Time. But why am I mentioning all of this right now? Is it just an excuse to artificially extend the length of this video? Well, yes, but no. I wanted to give some background on my experience with this title for those of you that don't know. I wanted to show the history that I had with Dynasty Warriors 4 and just how much of a fan I am. I mean, I guess I could have just shown you the six copies of the game that I have, but whatever. This brings us to the PC version of the game, which was released on March 30th, 2005. I remember seeing screenshots in magazines and online, seeing some people after its release modding it to give characters different weapons. I never really wanted to play this game on PC at first. I've always been more of a console gamer, but I noticed something in a couple of screenshots that changed my mind about Hyper. Shadows. 
I actually didn't notice it at first. It was a few years later after Dynasty Warriors 5 Empires hit store shelves on Xbox 360. Thanks to that entry, I knew what dynamic shadows in a Warriors game could look like. Previous games had a dark circle under the character, but the 360 release of Dynasty Warriors 5 Empires changed all of that. I knew I had to get it. So I frequented eBay looking for an affordable copy of the game. Most English copies went around $100 plus after shipping, which meant that I would really need to want to play this game in order to drop that much money on it, especially considering I had already played it multiple times over. I eventually found a Russian copy for around $25. I didn't even care that it was in a language that I don't understand. I bought it instantly. While I waited for this game to come in the mail, I looked up videos to see how good it would look. Most most videos I found were in lower resolutions or didn't have the dynamic shadows turned on. So I'm going to make an honest push to put these gameplay videos on my second channel, Guildart Gameplay, so everyone can enjoy this game at 1080p. I thought it was weird that most videos didn't have my main selling point turned on until I stumbled on a video by Thomas Fitchell. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Essentially, modern computers won't be compatible with the dynamic shadows option, so you need to download a file called DG Voodoo. This helps older games connect to modern hardware. Without this, even if you turn on dynamic shadows, it'll do nothing. You won't even get the little circle under your character. I made sure to file this video away, and when my copy of Dynasty Warriors 4 Hyper actually came in, I instantly went to make sure that DG Voodoo worked. The moment I loaded the first stage and took my first steps into the Yellow Turban Menace at max settings, I was floored. Dynasty Warriors 4 Hyper is almost exactly what I wanted at this moment in my life. I've been waiting for HD remasters of the classic games for a long time now. Even if Dynasty Warriors 2 isn't really my go-to game, I still wouldn't mind playing through it again with the classic weapons and movesets. Dynasty Warriors 3 is another big one I'd like to play again as a remaster since 3 Extreme Legends was my first game in the franchise. I think I've made it pretty clear that Dynasty Warriors 4 is my favorite of the classics, but I'd also love to play Dynasty Warriors 5 as well, especially after the devastation of not getting Dynasty Warriors 5 Special on Xbox 360 in the West. But the only thing is, Dynasty Warriors 4 Hyper doesn't replace the want to have a remaster. It just serves as a stepping stone to help me not need a remaster quite as soon. If Dynasty Warriors 4 Hyper was just straight ported to Steam, it wouldn't be a bad thing necessarily. I think it's important to keep these old games accessible to new players, but I think a remaster is still warranted because there are some updates I wish were in Hyper, but should definitely be in a remaster. First off, I wish there was a widescreen resolution option, even if it were maxed at 720. It'd be better than having empty space on the sides of my screen. I will say though, it is nice to have as high a resolution as Hyper does. Even though the game doesn't have a widescreen option, the highest resolution is 1280 by 1024. For a game that came out in 2005, being only 56 pixels away from a 1080 resolution is very impressive. I will say that it's weird playing a game in an aspect ratio ratio besides 4x3 and 16x9. Instead, it's a 5x4. This aspect makes it that much more awkward with a widescreen display because you have even more empty space than you would with a 4x3. Because of this, any pre-rendered cutscenes are still rendered in 4x3. You're going to have some black space at the top and bottom unless you drop your resolution to a 4x3 ratio, which the highest would be 1280x960, which is still a decent resolution for this game. What's also interesting is how I own both Warriors Odichi 1 and Samurai Warriors 2 on PC, and they both have a highest resolution of 1280 by 960 so Dynasty Warriors 4 Hyper has a higher resolution than two games that came out after it. Pre-rendered cutscenes are the only type of cutscene that have these issues too, where the pre-rendered ones are affected by the aspect ratio, the in-game events are not affected by the dynamic shadow setting. This was very disappointing because I was hoping to see some of my favorite mid-stage events with these new graphics, but I was unfortunately let down. The victory animations do have have the dynamic shadows though, so I'm surprised the in-game cutscenes don't. There doesn't seem to be any mod or workaround to get them to have the dynamic shadows from my research. The issues I have don't stop at the graphics though. Dynasty Warriors 4 Hyper is also held back by the combo lock-on mechanic that was removed in Dynasty Warriors 4 Empires. It's disappointing how this is still a part of Hyper even though it came out over half a year after Empires. Koei had every opportunity to remove this mechanic from the PC version or provide the player with an option to toggle. Instead, players would have to resort to modding in order to remove it. For this, 
this I found a YouTube video under the username Michael where a cheat engine file was created to remove the lock on function. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem to be compatible with my Russian version. This could be due to files, folders, or code being different. I don't know, I'm not smart enough to understand how to mod. But let's be honest, if the lock on function didn't stop me from playing these classic games before, it's not really going to stop me now. Finally, the last part of the game that I would like to see added in a remaster that isn't present in Hyper is camera control. I'm not even sure if this is something that could be modded into the game, but I would love it if we could have the dynamic shadows of Hyper with the camera control of Samurai Warriors 2 and onward. With how gorgeous this game is in such a high resolution, I just want to do some panning camera action to look at the world around me. It would also be nice not to have to tap guard every time I want the camera to move, only to be forced to have it reset behind me or nothing else. Again, Again, if Dynasty Warriors 4 Hyper just gets straight ported to Steam, it won't be a bad thing, but that doesn't mean I won't complain about the lack of a remaster. Now, it's not all bad. In fact, this has quickly become my preferred method of playing this entry in the franchise since the day that it arrived in the mail. Does it suck having a Russian version of the game instead of an English? Yes. Does it suck to have only spent $25 instead of the going 100 plus? Absolutely not. There are some positives to the Russian version for my monolingual ass. Though all the text is in Russian, the voice options are Japanese by default or English if you change it in the options menu. So it's not as bad as playing solely in Russian. I can still understand and enjoy playing through the game over and over again. What I will say though is that the lip flaps in the Russian version are synced to the Japanese voices, so that does lead to some weird moments during the events where they would have changed that for the English release. It also does make it a little harder to find certain stages in free mode when I'm trying to unlock the secret weapons and items, but I've played so much of this game that I almost recognize all of the pictures for each stage. I've been able to snag a couple of the secret items and level 10 weapons even with the language barrier. I also noticed something that was very interesting as well. I believe Hyper was built using the Xbox version of the base game rather than the more popular PS2 version. Honestly, this makes a whole lot of sense. If you play Dynasty Warriors 4 through PS2 emulation, you may notice some blurred visuals when things are moving. This is because the PS2 as a console was built for interlaced displays. This is why I played mostly on the original Xbox with component cables upscaled to 1080p with the M Classic. For the longest time, this was the best and smoothest visuals that I could get. The original Xbox at the time was very close in hardware to PCs, so building a PC version off of an Xbox game was easier than a PS2 game. But there's something specific that really leads me to thinking the PC port is built off of the Xbox version that has nothing to do with technology. You see, Xiao Yun's fourth costume is supposed to be a variant of the second costume color swap where it's black and dark green, rather than the light bluish green and beige. But for some reason, only the headband changes color in the Xbox and PC versions. The rest of his outfit is still the same default color. This is a super weird and interesting fact you don't see many people talking about. Probably because I was the only one that played the Xbox version as much as I did. All in all, I am very pleased with Dynasty Warriors 4 Hyper. Even though it seemed like I was complaining for the better part of this video, I'm really just mentioning the facts so that if you're looking to pick up Hyper because you think it's going to replace a remaster, that's not going to happen. A remaster is still very much needed. Beyond this, Dynasty Warriors 4 Hyper also has an extremely steady frame rate. Even at max settings and with OBS recording the gameplay footage, I never had any issues with the number of troops on screen or any particle effects like the fire during Chibi or Wan Castle. The entire experience is extremely smooth. I never noticed any slowdown or dropped frames. Everything I could want from Dynasty Warriors 4 is here with the best visuals you can get for the game. You can bet your ass I'll be playing a hell of a lot more of this game until everyone has their level 10 weapon and Dynasty Warriors 3 outfit. I want to max out everything in this game. The stats of characters, even the level of items. And once all of that is done, I'll still be posting gameplay videos on the second channel because god Damn, this game is beautiful. And now that I've caught one of my white whales, what's my next target? The Musou franchise has a surprising amount of rare games to snag, especially for Westerners. I really think the next one is going to have to be Dynasty Warriors 5 Special. That has been a massive thorn in my side, sitting around waiting for it to come, seeing information on its release in Japan, and then nothing else. And with that being said, I am happy to announce that I have finally imported Dynasty Warriors 5 Special on Xbox 360. And not only that, I have a boxed Japanese Xbox 360 console. I really do want to thank everyone, especially the guild who support this channel via Patreon, for all of the support that the channel has got. 
Without all of that support, I wouldn't have been able to drop the money on buying this stuff. So you can definitely expect more videos on Dynasty Warriors 5 Special and Dynasty Warriors 4 Hyper, both here on the channel as well as the second channel, Guildart Gameplay. But now that I've dropped the money on Dynasty Warriors 5 Special and a Japanese Xbox 360, I wonder if I have money for supper. Hey, I'm changing in here! Yeah, that checks out. Anyways, everybody, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, give it a like and subscribe for more. Let me know your thoughts on Dynasty Warriors 4 Hyper in the comments below. And if you'd like to help support the channel and what I do here, you can join the guild just like these awesome people that you're seeing on screen right now. You can join their names at the end of every single video for just a dollar a month over on Patreon, or you can donate in a one-time fashion over on Coffee. There are other rewards and other tiers as well, so check out the links that you see on screen, and I will see you all down in the comments.